What's going on my PT peeps and Walking Dead family? Welcome to the PT channel. I'm One Eye Bry, also known as PT, and I'm back to talk about Fear the Walking Dead Season 5, Episode 9. So obviously, spoiler warning for Season 5 as a whole, definitely Episode 509, and the entire series of The Walking Dead and Fear the Walking Dead, spoiler warning. Here's going to be my review, discussion, recap a little bit, just the general discussion about Season 5, Episode 9. Overall, I thought the episode was good, and it's building for the back half of Season 5. The whole interview process thing was like, we've already done this, Althea. I just feel like that was done before, been there, done that, got the t-shirt, all that stuff. But it was just a little off at times, especially how she was recording and Luciana was recording. And then they had to like make sure they were getting good stuff to build the case so people would understand that they're good people. Really? Because if people don't want to join you, Okay, good riddance. I don't want to force people. It's a zombie apocalypse. And the whole thing is that you could be great people, but the people you're bringing in could not be. What about that whole angle, right? I mean, we know Althea, Morgan, Alicia, Strand, everybody here in our group is good. But what if you bring somebody in that's not? That's a good point, right? We'll have to wait and see if the writers have thought of that or not, but the show is just all over the place and it's kind of annoying at times in my opinion. And Morgan did say about his wife, and son, and they're gone. As for Alicia, she's kind of up and down and this and that and wants to take out all these walkers. And now she's like, I don't wanna take out any walkers. I'm just gonna do this. I've been on cleanup and yeah, that's what we're doing. So we did get a little bit of a time jump because Luciana looks to be healed. She looks to be in good shape. She's holding the camera and it looks to be okay, but I'm interested to know what's gonna happen with the back half of season five and the rest of the cast. Are we gonna lose anybody? We haven't. I thought it was interesting when Morgan and Alicia were working on the forms with the bow staff and it was cool. It was good to see that. Hopefully Morgan can rebuild Alicia and I don't need to see another Morgan up and down, clear mode, save mode, clear mode, save mode. That's what Alicia is in my opinion. And to me, it's kind of lazy writing just to go the way of Morgan because what are you doing with this character and what's up with this tree? That was interesting to me. Is it Madison? Is it somebody else? Because Alicia seemed to be interested in it. But the fact that she couldn't take this walker out and wasn't going to, Strand had to come save the day, is pretty weak. It's like, come on, Alicia, don't be that person when you're all about taking walkers out and now you can't do it. And the fact that this guy randomly was the walker that they needed to find from the landmine situation. But Madison is the topic of interest until we see her again, unless the showrunners say she is gone, she will not be coming back. And I built my case in talking about Madison, that she was gone, Talking Dead, the actress, all that stuff in season four. And it's pretty poor writing unless you were going to bring her back in season five or six as the villain. But is Sherry writing that on the trees or a member of Sherry's group? That would be very interesting if Sherry is connected with the writing on the trees. I hope she is, and I hope the Whitey Boy does find Sherry this season. Will it be the last episode? Will it be season six? I really hope it happens. We still have no word on that yet, or the actress or anything. And I have to comment this because not a lot of people kick walkers down. Jesus did it, and a couple of characters have, but Strand did it in season five, episode nine. He's also using the gun barrel that was Alicia's weapon. And when Strand kicked the walker down, and I was like, finally, finally, you have a far better reach, longer reach, with a kick than a punch, for sure. And I don't know about you, but I have to say that Strand has grown on me since the very first season. He wasn't the most likable character, but he does have my interest. He's usually connected with some bigger moments, some big parts of the story, and I'm excited to see what happens with the rest of the story. As for Charlie, she's pretty useless, just like Luciana in my opinion, and Alicia, I just feel like she needs to get her act together, and she needs a purpose. After traumatic events, you need a purpose to take your mind off it and to base your efforts in a positive manner. I feel like she's safe, she looks a little pale, but she's not sick in my opinion. Will we lose her this season? I hope not, but you never know. We didn't lose anyone this episode, and we haven't so far. As for this whole situation here at this house, with the landmines and the whole situation here, it was kind of crazy. Like, you really should have started throwing stuff over and throwing walkers and let the walkers go close to the house because they're gonna blow up. It was pretty great. The explosions were pretty great, but it was kind of comical that you could tell that Something was gonna happen, especially when Morgan stepped on the landmine and you know, John's just taking out walkers left and right. 
boom, boom, boom. Just let them get close to the house and let it blow up the landmines. They're not gonna get inside the house. They had boards on the windows and everything there too. But the whole thing with keep rolling, keep rolling. I need to get this on camera. Really? Because are the people gonna care that you did this? Are you gonna care that Luciana got great footage if Morgan blew up? I mean, that would've been crazy, right? And we know that Morgan's not gonna die and anything there was kind of crazy, but it was interesting because the whole dynamic of Morgan and the woman and the child was like, he's trying to save them to make up losing his wife and child of Dwayne and Jenny. And I could see that it was just a little over the top. I still love Daniel and John. They're my favorite characters. I loved it when Daniel was talking about Dwight and he still won't let me give him a haircut. So I wonder how much time has gone by since 508 and 509. But Daniel wasn't really in this episode a lot, but when he was, he stole the show as well as John. And I just like when they're on camera and they put a lot in the story, as well as Sarah and Wendell. We didn't see Wendell. We saw the SWAT truck and we saw Sarah and we saw the truck and the fuel truck and the convoy and the whole situation with gasoline. And it's interesting because gasoline's starting to go bad, but I just like Sarah and I like Wendell too, but Sarah's just got one of those personalities that I enjoy watching her on the show and she just makes the show entertaining. I'm not sure if we're gonna see Wendell less and less and less and what's gonna happen with the kids because we didn't see the kids at all. And it would be pretty crappy if something happens to the kids if we had all that storyline in the first half of season five, just for something to happen, that would be really crappy. We didn't see them and Wendell, but I hope there's some storyline coming up for them in the back half of season five. As for Sarah and Logan, it was interesting when Sarah was telling the story about Logan and they left him out there. Well, would you really just leave him there? I know it's not easy to take people out in life and in the zombie apocalypse. Again, it's a fictional show. It's not real life and it's got to be tough either way. But it's just interesting because you leave the bad guy out there and you know he's going to come back around, right? He was just kind of annoying. And I really hope Logan is the villain that we need on the show. And he just comes across as the grumpy old man. Get off my lawn. Give me my gasoline. I'm Logan. He can't be worse than Martha, though. That's for sure. Martha, to me, was great on paper poor execution on the show. The outfit, the invincibility factor, just like they make the villains on The Walking Dead and Fear the Walking Dead, The Walking Dead universe, too invincible. Nothing gets to them and they cause all these problems. As for this scene right here, I'm like, why couldn't you just stay here? Why couldn't you just stay at this location? I'm guessing they have more outposts and it was kind of tough to put together. Was the whole episode a flashback of what they did? and the guy was watching a videotape of all the things that they did? Is that what we saw? So we only saw like a couple minutes of present day timeline? As for this guy and the RV, did you get a feeling of the Breaking Bad RV or at least Dale's RV? And I have to say that this character here drew my interest, but it was like, all right, it's over. Where are we going from here? And I guess it's what you do to set up the next episode, but I was just understanding it as, we watched the whole episode in the video. That's what we saw, this guy watching a video for the entire episode. And I have to say, I know this is not the same actor or character by any means, but I got a Heath vibe from this guy. He's different, he's got dreadlocks, but he kind of gives me a Heath vibe. I know it's not the same character and actor by any means, but what if Heath came over to Fear the Walking Dead? That's a joke, it's not a theory, I know it's not there. Heath should be in the movies with Rick or at least the CRM people or wherever Rick went. But as for the future of the show, I'm interested to know what happens with these people and how many people are we going to lose here? This is a pretty big cast and I wonder when we're finally going to lose somebody. Also, the whole thing with the bullets and blowing up the motorcycle and shooting the tire and then the tire and then and putting a million rounds into the motorcycle, it was like overkill. And then Logan's like, we got too many bullets. We don't know what to do with. What are we going to do? Just take out walkers and do something productive. Come on. But overall, the episode was entertaining for sure. I know some people like to give me a hard time and say I'm too negative on this. Well, haters are going to hate, that's for sure. But overall, I thought the episode was good. It was very entertaining and is a good step in the right path for the back half of season five. I'm excited for the next seven episodes and then the return of The Walking Dead on October 6th. So let me know your thoughts, post your comments below, and please hit that subscribe button to help us achieve our goal of 100 thousand subscribers tell your friends 
tell your family, and have them please subscribe to join our PT channel, Walking Dead Family. And for those interested in my zombie apocalypse book series, there it is right there. Fight for us, available on amazon.com, barnesandnoble.com, paperback and digital versions. And remember with hard work, dedication, belief, and sacrifice, you can truly achieve your goals. Believe in yourself, you can do it. It's about love, support, staying positive, making memories. And as always, tell them Daryl. Yo, we love you guys. Honestly, thank you.